Welcome to day nine of Teshuvah. This is my 10 days of prayer. My hope and my desire was to get it done in 10 days, but have a lot of moving parts in my life right now, but I'm grateful for the busyness. I'm grateful for what God is doing in my life and in the life of my family. But today is, I want you to step into your next season. I remember hearing a prophet say that so many of us are used to bad that we can't, ex we don't have the capacity to expect anything good. I want to tell you that your tomorrows are going to be wonderful. And as you have turned your heart towards God, that God is a God of blessing in the book of Joel. He said that if you would repent, who's to know if I will leave behind a blessing? Because we have to understand that the land during that time was completely desecrated. All the crops were absolutely destroyed. I was doing a study on locusts and they say when locusts come and destroy a land because the land was destroyed by three waves of locusts that it can take up to 10 years for that land to be replenished. But the Lord restored it in a day. He can change and shift your day in 30 seconds. I want you to put yourself in a position where you expect the goodness of God, that you don't that you no longer expect failure and defeat, but that this is going to be the best decade of your life. So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lift you up before the Lord. This is not live today, but I'm going to go back and watch the video. I'm going to stream it live, but put in your prayers and your comments. And I want you I want, I decree today that the joy of the Lord is your strength and that you put, the Bible says that we forget those things that are behind us and that we press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And he said that your sins will be, that once you repent, your sins are put in the sea of forgetfulness and that he will not remember them anymore. The only person that reminds you of what you've done and who you've used to be is the enemy and yourself. So I want you to embrace your new self. What are your dreams? What are your goals? What are your ambitions? What do you expect God to do for you? Because the Bible says that expectation comes from the Lord and you are not going to get more than you expect. So Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you that you are a mighty God. Father, we thank you for your mighty hand, Lord. We thank you that you are a God that blesses and does not curse, Father. And it is your good pleasure to give us the keys to the kingdom. Lord, I thank you that you are releasing keys to your people right now in the name of Jesus. I come against lack and poverty, not just physical and not just financial, but emotional lack and poverty. I thank you that you are strengthening your people from the inside out, Lord God. And as we talked about the joy of the Lord, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is their portion and they are being strengthened even right now. If you are watching me for the very first time, I want you to go back and watch the other eight videos. And I promise you that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. But I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to understand that God is is a good God. I think one of the most beautiful songs that ever came out was he, God is a good father. He loves his children. He wants the best for you. He's not looking to banish you to the kingdom because you made a mistake or that you've gotten off course. I want to tell you, get back on the track. Get back on course. I release the mercy of God and the strength of the Holy Spirit for you to course correct. And when you course correct in God, you don't have to start back at ground zero. You, you just start right where you left off and know that the, the power of the Holy Spirit will help move you forward. It's like locomotive power. It's power that is unstoppable. It's power that you cannot interfere with. You cannot stop a train that has already stopped moving. And I thank you that I love this. I'm being very churchy that you are on the glory train today and that the power of God is strengthening you not only on the outside, but on the inside. I come against depression and anxiety. I know that so many of God's people are dealing with depression and anxiety. I want you, I want to remind you and or in alert you or inform you that depression is always about your past. It's what shoulda, coulda, woulda. Your past is over. Your past is behind you. 
there are times that we will have to deal with um, some of the consequences of our past. But the beautiful, beautiful thing about our Father is that when we, we are in that place, He releases the mercy of God to be able to get us through it so it doesn't impact our lives the way that it should impact their, our lives. Because I know there are some decisions that I have made in the past, and I thank God for a soft landing. And it wasn't things I did accidentally. It is things that I did willfully. It is sins that I, I committed with eyes open. But he still, the mercy of God still gave me a soft landing. I want you to get that in your mind that God is not in the background trying to pay you back. It is the enemy. He wants to remind you of the things that you did bad or how you violated God or how you fell off the, you know, the beaten path. He's constantly reminds you and you are allowing him to play that over and over and over in your mind. And it's just a tape that's already on automatic replay. So I want you, one of the number one things that you have to do to step into your tomorrows and step into the joy of the Lord is you have to renew your mind Get scriptures that you are standing on. Get scriptures that you can decree and declare over your life because the Bible says that you will have whatever you say. What is it are you what is it that you are declaring over your life right now? What are you saying about your future? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your mistakes? Are you just sitting there day by day just rehearsing what you've done wrong or are you declaring the goodness of God because again, this is a common theme. If you you have repented. Part of teshuva is really turning your hearts towards God. Not halfway, not a quarter of a way, but completely turning your heart towards God, meaning that you are going to do an about face and you are going to go in the opposite direction that you have been going in. But I believe that the whole premise of what God told me to do, because I, I believe in obeying God concerning his people, is that he wants to just give you a fresh start. He wants you to renew your mind to who you really are in him, not who the world is saying you are, not who your parents said you are, but who you are in him. And you are a son and you are a daughter and you have been adopted into the family. Your adoption was legal and nobody can take it away. No government, no state, no person. You can't even cancel your adoption. And so, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are a merciful God. We thank you that you are a loving God. And I thank you that your people are stepping into a brand new season, Lord God, Father, that they are forgetting those things which are behind them and they are pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Lord. I thank you that they are the fragrance of God and that everywhere they go, they remit your fragrance. I thank you they are a blessing to the people that they come in contact with. They are a blessing to their family, their children, the their co-workers, their bosses, Lord, that everything, everywhere they go, the environment, gets shifted and turned into the pr a place where God can dwell. And Lord, I just praise you right now. I just lift up your sons and I lift up your daughters. And Father, I thank you that this is something that they are grabbing a hold of, that they don't hear it and forget it. Because God, you said in your word, we can't be like those that forget what we heard and what we saw. We are not putting our seed on fallow ground, but we are we are digging a trench and we are planting the seeds of what we received out of the word of God, out of the rhema word of God from every prophet. I want you to go back and remember some of the promises of God because the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. And God has not forgotten his promise towards you. He will keep it. You are the only one that can cancel it. And the enemy is powerless concerning your future and your destiny. The only power he has is what you give him. And I want to read Isaiah. This is a scripture that's coming up in my spirit. It is Isaiah 54, 1. And, I, and I'm going to read this not gender specific. It says, sing, O barren woman. You who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy. You who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. 
Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out. I love this. You will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. So God's not, this is, this is a generational blessing. The Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. So I decree that your descendants, again, will dispossess nations. Uh, another translation says your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the red, the and resettle the ruined cities. Another translation says, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will and will people the desolate cities. I want to say that what God is doing in your life right now, it is generational. It is not just for you. And I cancel again guilt and condemnation. If you have repented, if you have changed your ways, if you have washed your garments, then you are forgiven and the mercy of God is your portion. And so I decree today that the joy of the Lord is your strength.